I think for me, it was just getting it done. The first block of pre-season at Redfern is never nice. A lot more running and a lot less touching the ball and a lot less of the fun things that people like about football. But obviously, it's a spiritual home for us. So the new guys coming in to get to see that side of of Redfern and South Sydney was important. They spoke about that and how you know, they could feel the history on the walls. And coming back here, it's probably ignited that uh, drive in us even more to appreciate what we've got when we're here. We're so lucky to have a facility that we've got, but it's about making sure that we're the next generation that puts some history on the walls and the players are committed to, to be in that group. The energy since camp's been through the roof. There's still a lot of hard work going on here and a lot of earning the right through through reps and getting better day by day. And I think that's what everyone's focused on, just our process now and making sure that we're better than we were the previous day and the last week. Just looking forward to getting through this last couple of real hard weeks and then getting back into footy. So keen as. A few more weeks of running, a few more weeks of the long days, but then it's going to be all worth it when it comes to this time and a month's time. So. Everyone's got their fire in their belly just to try and you know, make 2024 a memorable year. I think there was one in Tassie where he didn't get there, but his effort to get there was, was spot on. It's not necessarily about getting there to the corner, it's about how much effort you get there because you might get there. I can only speak for myself, but I, I hated watching the semi finals um, without us being in there with, with the side that we do have. So I think that's motivated everyone to come back in very good nick after the preseason and get to work. You can talk all you want about you know, what you want to do and do this and do that, but you have to come in and do the work. And I think that's what a lot of people have come in and done, come in and just put the work in without any, any whinge and any, you know, any sook. And so we can't wait to get out there round one and, and get the job done. Attention with filling up and bouncing as well was pretty good on our side. I feel like there's a massive freshen up across the group. I think everyone's got a lot of belief for what this team's really capable of and, and what we can do. A couple of players that have come in and the younger boy standards have gone way up this year, especially after the great season reserve grade had last year as well. And the likes of Kepi and Jack White and coming in here just to give that freshen up as well and boost our confidence, listening to how they talk as well about what it's like to play against South Sydney at their best puts a lot of belief back into how, how good we can really be. Jack and Sean Kepi have settled in really well. I think the camp again was a really good uh, connection piece for them to, to really fit into the group and they haven't just come in and been part of our group, they've come in and added to our group which is what you want from new recruits and you know, I've spoken about it before and the influence I know Jack will have on everybody inside the building but I think Sean will bring a lot to our forward pack as well and he's starting to find his voice now which is great and they're two players that are, are going to really have an impact on, on our squad and on our, and our club as a whole so I'm looking forward to that. Oh wow! That's our man Kepi Gus. Came to a point in Manly where I feel like I needed a change. I spoke to the coach and I spoke to a few of the boys. I've known a few of the boys a little bit. It happened pretty quickly and um, I was just jumped on it pretty quickly as well. Brings obviously a lot of aggression and passion and I think he's going to be a real asset for our forward pack this year. <laughs> he got me. Our lockers are right next to each other so didn't know him too well before he come here and me and him actually got get along really well. Um, we were always hanging out and having a coffee, having a chat and that. He's a bigger body, bring that size that we need. And definitely his experience, he's you know, played a couple of games, he's been around for a couple of years now, so it'll only do good for our pack. And our new recruit, Jackie Whiten. Yeah! It's a change, a changing environment, and the great bunch of boys and coaches staff we've got here has been exciting so far. And what you look forward to most is winning games. With your mates, you train so hard. We're yeah, just getting out there and putting it all on the line for the um, South fans and, and the boys in the team. Hey, Jack, what are you doing, Brad? We do promos in training. Jackie Legs has uh, yeah, been a little energizer bunny around. Uh, doesn't stop talking. Yeah, he's just an upbeat, real big kid. When he switches it on, he flicks a switch pretty quick and becomes the leader of the group. And 
lot of boys listen to him, obviously because of the accolades he has. Um, been Daly M um, previous years, been in the grand final, played for New South Wales, played for Australia. <laughs> When I heard rumours that you know he was potentially close to signing, I couldn't believe it. I thought I'd played my last game with him when he announced his rep retirement. There you go. Jumped on the scales the first day he got in and I asked him what his playing weight was and he just sort of pointed the scale as if to say, I'm already at it. One thing, we've been looking at some data from pre-season training and he's smashing them all. Jack Whiten goes all the way himself. He playing with him in Canberra, it didn't help with the recruiting. That was all trail. <laughs> Everyone asks me that, I don't know why. I only went to lunch with him and just said, how you going? And had a fever, hello, and um, yeah, and next day he signed, so I don't know if it was a good idea to bring him here. <laughs> nah, he's going good. I I've actually really enjoyed it. A lot of boys got, you know, get a kick out of him with what I get out of him, so it's really special. I love the man, and he you know, he's really, just someone you want to be around. He's, he's very professional in the way he goes about things, but also a little kid on the side, you know, and it's, it's something you want to be a part of and a person you want in your, in your crew. So I think uh, a lot of the boys are seeing the light with him and um, he's been a lot. So, yeah, the club will see, you know, what we signed him for and um, uh, I just know he's going to be the biggest competitor in the team. You ready for fishing? People always asking, why I can't see you? When we gon' link, I'm busy like, you know, but, yeah Yeah, we outside today If you really looking for me, I'm miles away I be with my peoples in the hideaway They can only see me on the holidays well, I've got you, Zia. Just wanted to say, appreciate you coming on the show. But um, <laughs> we didn't want to. <laughs> they wanted to come. Kevin goes, oh, we're going down for a fishing call. No, I didn't. No story about a television. <laughs> <laughs> oh, straight at it. <laughs> Nelly Hook. Jack. So what's it like, you know, coming to a new club? Firstly, what were your expectations when you first, you know, arrived? I didn't know that you were like a pretty tight-knit group coming in. So I didn't know how I was going to fit in. No, he's made me feel real welcome. I'm really enjoying myself and it's a good bunch of blokes in a good team. So, no, nah, I'm finding it really good, really easy. It was a big move, but something I'm grateful I've done now, you know, I've been really enjoying it. The family's happy, settled in. All I wanted was change, you know, and from outside footy to, you know, we're fishing and the families, they've been loving it too, mate. They're, they're swimming every day and, and my wife settled in well. She's, she's working uh, from home at the moment. And, uh, we've got everything on track, so at the moment everyone's all happy, mate, and it's been really enjoyable so far. Big sea turtle, look at him! <laughs> <laughs> From your transitions, when you were playing at the old clubs, you know, what did you find about South and, you know, turning up every week knowing you had to play them and what was tough about them and why was I the hardest opponent? I got pretty lucky, you are always injured or scared when we played you. So. <laughs> <laughs> I never, never got to play you much and I was pretty peaked before, before you got hit me. There's not been a good memory versus you guys. Lost six times and got knocked clean out one time. Was that by Trill? Nah, it was by Mark Nichols. Oh, I remember it, it was a slimy little left, like late foot off the kickoff and then just, you see Big Kep just like... <laughs> Then I got up and I made the next tackle. Yeah, with one eye open. <laughs> actual, <laughs> actual. He know he was tackling his own teammate. <laughs> I think it was you he too. Was tackling Cherry Evans. I think it was you too. And I guess I'm just getting more and more excited. Um, I think my debut, uh, if I'm fit to go, is uh, Roosters round three. So I'll get the local derby and um, over the years I've, I've seen how much passion is in that. So the next stage is uh, pulling that jersey on and representing ourselves, our families and you know, the fans. You guys have always been in the um, in the mix, in the top four, top eight. Hopefully this year we can be in the top four. So yeah, I'm really excited to see what, as a group, what we can do. One thing I'm very happy about is having all the South fans on my side yeah. now because <laughs> yeah. whenever we played you guys, we used to cop it left, right and center. So <laughs> uh, I'm glad they're on, on my team now, it's good. I'm Sajida. I'm Marion. And I'm Hara. And we're the Rhythm South, South, South Girls. Latrell Mitchell, you're not normal. Jacob Hose, not normal. Are you normal? There's no crowd without us and our family. We make chants, we're the loudest ones there. Literally.
You'll see half of us standing on the chair, not sitting down. You always have something to connect with with your family. When we go with my cousins, you always have something in common, something to get together for. We were coming down from my cousin's house in the night um, and then in the elevator we were just thinking like why don't we just start like a page and then a few weeks later um, we called a meeting into my room <laughs> and then we, um, we said you know what let's just open a page now it's easy to expand your page like you make content you're at the games you meet people the people around you and yeah we just decided it was a good idea we grew up with South. My dad used to play. He was South Junior. You don't get to choose who you go for, where you're what you're born into. Well, we came out after the Civil War and obviously the invasion of Israel of uh, southern Lebanon. And so we came out to Australia in uh, 77. I was about four years old. We grew up at, around sort of Canterbury area. The second year that I was at school, I got introduced to rugby league and these guys, South Sydney. And I think the, the reason why we loved, or we got into South Sydney, was they had the same colours as the Lebanon flag. So the Lebanon flag was red, white and green and we were from South Lebanon. The connection was there already. A lot of the uh, Lebanese and the Syrian people uh, that first moved out to uh, Australia back in the 60s and 70s, yeah, they lived in Redfern, um, Buckley Street actually, as well, right opposite uh, Redfern. So yeah, there was a lot, of, um, a lot of Lebanese people in the Redfern area. When you're first immigrant here, you know no one and it's very hard and I think Rugby League gave us that opportunity and my parents coming out and watching us play um, and there was also my brother who was playing Rugby League as well and my parents used to and my family used to come out and watch us in different games and different areas and I think that brought them out to a different style of life and they started to meet other people and they started to feel like it's they're part of this country so playing Rugby League especially when you go through the junior grades and you're playing for South Juniors and stuff like that you start to feel a part of the community, you start to feel a part of the, the country you're living in. And, and I thank Rugby League for that. And it was a great thing for us. It was really, it really was. It, it changed my life completely. And maybe had I not played Rugby League, it would have probably been harder to form that community with other communities. It helps a lot. So her dad thinks that he can paint the fence, cover his whole house in rabbitos, and then when the council knocks on his door and asks who spray and painted rabbitos on the roundabout, it wasn't him. <laughs> I saw a friend of mine up there, he's on the corner, he's a rabbit as well. He had a smaller version of this. And I went, wow. And I said, I got a fence here. And then we decided to move down. Well, I decided to move down. My wife was, was a bit ahead of it. But I, I ended up doing another thing for the indigenous. And then third fence, and then fourth fence. And I want to do one for the, all the years that they've won but I'm just going to get um, permission from my wife. That's all. She's getting a bit sick of it, you know what I mean? There was a new neighbor uh, around on the corner. Um, I don't know what we had won that day or whatever was going on. Everyone was celebrating on the street and they thought someone was um, robbing, robbing the house. house. <laughs> Away games, this place is like a sold out stadium. Me and my brother, we also watch it at each other's houses, family. It just brings the kids together. And for me, Personally, that's the main thing. That's honestly the main thing, that I got my kids next to me, with me, on the same page, and it just brings us all together. And, and, and to me, that's the main thing, you know? And that's what South is all about, it's a family. South Sydney, in general, are a family. The history of South, the culture of South, it's a family, and, and that progresses through to the, to the members and to the families who support South, and that's a great thing. When we got really fatigued at the end there, we lost a bit of our celebration. Yep, now we got it. We got a little bit. Sh and we 
with the same process, but they've still got a find a way to celebrate, particularly at the end there. When we, when we stopped the clock and we descended six, defended 16 plays in a row, that's where we could keep driving that celebration. But there were some really good signs of that during the session as well. Yep. Good week again, guys. <laughs> No other fan base like it. You go down Redfern Oval and you see throughout the preseason, you always see people there with a bunny shirt on. And even when you come here to Heffron, there's always people sitting on the sideline watching training and you know getting to see us in the flesh. Don't get to see that too often in, in different you know NRL clubs across Australia. We love our fan base, best members in the league, are people that support us now. You know they might live out west, they might live interstate or overseas, but they've still got the same passion. Everyone's got a story and everyone's just as passionate as they were, you know, 10, 20, 30 plus years ago. So it's definitely a family feel with our members and fans. And it's a big reason why we run out there every week and try to do our best because we hold that responsibility in high regard and close to our heart. And we always try to go and put our best foot forward for the people that, are, that depend on it. So yeah, it's a massive reason why we love this club and uh, love representing the red and green. Supporting South Sydney is more than just supporting rugby league. I think it's it's almost like a religion. It's a faith that you know once you're in South Sydney, that's who you are. It's in your DNA, and we definitely feel that. We feel that here at Heffron. We feel it at Redfern, and we feel it on game day. And I think it's that's what makes us special. That there's that commitment and the passion in the stands is second to none. And we're really excited uh, this year to have as many games as we've got back at home in Sydney. And Looking forward to having that run with our supporters, a run we haven't had for probably three years since COVID. So it's, I know the playing group have, have recognised that and are really excited to get out and, and play in front of our fans. The ref owes us three now. Three. If you're calling now, nah, he owes us three. JD, calm down, we love you. We're going to win. <laughs> I think it's about us all trusting the process and, and buying into what we're doing here. A lot of boys that are really keen, I know, to go out and play some footy represent South Sydney. I had a fracture in my knee, so I pretty much shattered my kneecap. It's definitely getting harder, but the harder the better, I think. <laughs> From a coaching perspective, Vegas is outstanding. I, I really enjoy it. To go over there and witness that and be a part of history being the first game played in Vegas is something that we're all proud of. That's my what's driving me at the moment, to make sure that when we get to the starting gate, they're ready to go. And I'm ready now. Let's go. <laughs> He's got him straight away. He's got him straight away. He's got him. He's got him. He's got him. He's got him. 18! 19! That right end is a killer. There's a dog in the house.